This video was originally recorded May 2018 at Tibet House US in New York City. To watch the full archive recording, please visit tibethouse.us. I work on the border. How many people think they're going to have a future life in here? How many people? Oh, not as many as had pure joy. <laughs> not as many why. as had pure joy. You know, to, to, you know, I love to ask my scientific materialist friends. Nowadays, one of my favorite things to ask them is, um, could they tell me, I'm so sort of ignorant in the history of science, I'm a humanist, you know, you know, the, the humanities side of the faculties, you know. They're the ones the least paid. <laughs> and they're not in the STEM thing that everybody wants everyone to do, you know. You know, what, engineering. And, okay, and never mind. So, so the point is that um, I asked them, well, who discovered that there's no future life? That when you die, you become nothing. Your consciousness becomes nothing. Who discovered that? Was that Newton? Was it Descartes? Was it who's the one who gets the award for discovering the nothing that awaits you? Because you're a scientist and you go on what has been discovered and experienced, right? It's because you don't go on blind faith, things that's a god, you know, the crazy things, you know, burning bushes and weird things. And uh, you don't believe any of that. You believe what people have experienced, right? So who was it who experienced the nothing after death? And it celebrated in the annals of science. Can anyone tell me? Anyone in the room? Of the many of you who didn't hold up your hand and don't expect to have a future <laughs> continuation after your death, who discovered that and reported it as scientific fact? I mean, when you, go, when you have a headache, you, scientifically it's okay to take a a leave or a aspirin or something, right? Or, or Jethro Claus wants you to put your feet in a hot water that takes the blood out of your head. That's a, it's a cheaper way. And if you have a water heater. And uh, <laughs> so who discovered that? I love to ask them. And then they kind of don't get my point because they look like, well, who needs to discover? It's obvious, you know. It's totally obvious. And then I say, well, did Carl Sagan show up? and inform us in the epilogue to, to Cosmos that, there's, that he doesn't exist and therefore it's cool? Is anybody? Who, who's going to show up and tell? Oh, what? Cosmotopper. What? Cosmotopper. Cosmos. Cosmotopper? Yeah. What's Cosmotopper? Cosmos Hopper. Hopper? Marion. What? <laughs> George and Marion, the ghosts that came back to Cosmotopper. I don't know that. Oh, I don't know that. <laughs> You know, I mean the, the thing, the science thing, you know, about the wonderful billions and billions and, the, you know, like that one, you know, Carl Sagan. Maybe younger people don't know that. I'm sorry. I don't know yeah, about Charles Hopper like myself. <laughs> but I'm just saying that's a blind faith belief. Totally. Because no one obviously discovered nothing. And actually your common sense will tell you no one ever will. How about that? You pass out every night when you go to sleep. Right? So you've already disappeared many times. That continuum that if you know your dad was going to experience at death where his continuum of the unchanging subjectivity was he already experienced that zillion times every night he fell asleep, mm -hmm. right? And then you do have a dream and you wake up, something seems to continue, doesn't it? And has any can you point to anything in nature that becomes nothing? Has anybody managed? Can you point to nothing? Anybody? Gee whiz. News flash. Nothing is nothing. Therefore, you can't get in it. You can't enter it. You can't land in it. It isn't there. So everything you've ever experienced is something. Every t you pass out and then you wake up again. And you have a dream. So. You want to make a revised opinion? How many of you expect to continue after death? <laughs> <laughs> oh, another thing. I wasn't being tricky tonight. How many of you are afraid of nothing? 
There, it's a couple of hands. I usually I get a lot of hands on that one. Many people. Then I say, if a real life Rambo who stood up here and said, I ain't afraid of nothing, what would you think that meant? That would mean they were not afraid, right? So how can you manage to be afraid of nothing? Isn't that a little bit nutty? A little bit nutty. But there were only a couple of brave people held up their hands. I, I know that. So the piece about love is to be truly loving, you have to be aware of your own joy. You have to be, it has to be based on some kind of bliss of your own. And then you then want to share that. Don't you think logically that's the case? Because otherwise, and then you have to be able to see other beings as potentially happy. Well, you said you see them as all right. Somebody asked mm, you. Yeah. So yeah. what does it mean to see them as all right? Mm -hmm. It means to see that there's some happiness in them. Oh, look at you. Oh, you're looking up here. You're thinking. Your mind is working. You're like, <laughs> is, it, is, it, is it relief or, or addiction? <laughs> you know, and you're thinking that, and you're pleased with yourself. God, all these uh, spare parts. You get older, you have a lot of spare parts. <laughs> and you're, so you have, you know what joy is? You all know that. You're, you're healthy. You're sitting there. It, you know, look, Mark is enjoying one leg being over the other. <laughs> the, the thigh... This part of the thigh feels happy on that part of the thigh. So you're like happy there. That's a kind of joy. Your leg has a joy sitting there, right? <laughs> but we don't pay attention to that because we're worrying about some other thing, you know? So when you say you will be like you, find, you always were, mm -hmm. then that means you are some way that you don't admit to yourself that you are, mm -hmm. doesn't it? The, there is an aspect of ourselves that we don't have access to that actually knows better. This video was brought to you in part through the generous support of the Tibet House U.S. membership community and viewers like you. To learn more about the benefits of Tibet House membership, including special trips with Robert Thurman and friends with geographic expeditions, please visit tibethouse.us. Tashi Delek, and thanks for tuning in.